epilepsy warning for flashing lights and colors. Well, it's that time of year again. It's time to cover the annual expo of the International Association of Amusement Parks and Attractions, or IAPA for short. Last week, I got to visit the expo representing Instagram page The Theme Park Company. This year's event was bigger than ever, featuring countless booths from companies all across the amusement industry. The food, the animatronics, the theming, the rides, this expo never ceases to have something for everyone. And today, we're going to rank the top 21 ride reveals as voted on by the viewers. So grab a drink and kick back on the couch, because this year's expo was jam-packed. First up at number 21, we have Extreme Engineering, showing off a groundbreaking seat design. This innovation is not just a leap forward for their signature cloud coaster model, but for a variety of other attractions offered by the company. The new seat design is a prime example of ergonomic comfort and is able to seat passengers both big and small. What's truly remarkable about this new design is its versatility. These seats can be integrated into numerous other attractions in Extreme Engineering's portfolio. From high-flying cloud coasters to several flat rides, this universal seat design allows for a more streamlined manufacturing process. This also means that parks can more easily order and install these new seats for a multitude of rides. Overall, this seat allows for a consistent and comfortable rider experience across the board, be it a cloud coaster or otherwise. Number 20 is Whitewater West with their new log flume boat design. This is the first of several attractions going to the upcoming Six Flags Cadilla project. According to Whitewater, the aesthetic design process was extremely involved. The goal was to make the vehicles resemble boats made of straw to fit in with the ride's theme. From a design perspective, Whitewater undoubtedly did an excellent job. From the intricate weave patterns that mimic straw to the subtle hues of color, every aspect of the boat's design has been carefully considered and the attention to detail is evident. Definitely an aesthetically pleasing design. Whitewater West has once again achieved what they were aiming for. At number 19, we have Triotech with their new Superfly. Not a whole lot was revealed about this ride, but the new model combines a flying theater and an immersive simulator. On the Superfly, guests stand on one of 23 state-of-the-art motion platforms, each accommodating two riders. The standing position of the riders is a key defining feature, amplifying the motions and making the experience more immersive. Aside from the standard projection screens, this ride can be enhanced with an array of synchronized special effects. These include scents, air blasts, leg ticklers, and water sprays, all adding up to a multi-sensory experience. Next year, the Superfly will make its debut at Neb's Fun World, an indoor family entertainment center located in North Oshawa, Canada. At number 18 is Ride Entertainment with their latest concept, Switchback. Developed in collaboration with ZipTrack Technologies and Home Solutions, this relatively new zipline technology was represented by Ride Entertainment this year as part of a partnership with the aforementioned companies. You may recognize this from one of Tom Scott's videos, and the ride has certainly evolved since then. At the heart of the Switchback's ride system is the ability to seamlessly transition between cable and rail at high speeds. Courses can extend over long distances with a cable and navigate sharp corners with rails. Yep, this zip line is capable of turns. The dual mode track and cable combination allows for minimal support structures as well, meaning an easier construction process. Whether it's soaring over the treetops or skirting the edge of a cliff, Switchback offers limitless possibilities for customization. In addition to its cable rail hybrid system, Switchback utilizes electric vehicles, offering both single and tandem seating options. These battery-powered vehicles can ascend, descend, turn sharply, and stop promptly throughout the ride, giving designers unprecedented freedom to craft unique ride experiences. This ride has already made its debut as the Flying Ox in Pigeon Forge, Tennessee, but don't be surprised if you see more of these open soon. Number 17 on our list is Poland Water Parks with a series of innovative water slides. This year, the Turkish company caught everyone's attention with their What's New booklet and provided a tantalizing peek into their latest slide models. First up is the Dragon Racer, which takes inspiration from the previous King Cobra model and elevates it with more intricate theming. Recently installed at Vietnam's Tui Tin Water Park, and I apologize if I pronounced that wrong, the highlight of this slide is a stunningly detailed dragon at the peak of its halfpipe section. Polin also offers alternate theming options, catering to a variety of aesthetic preferences. 
Next up is the Double Rift, an eye-popping successor to the original Rift model. The Rift is known for its element resembling a vertical loop, but the Double Rift goes a step further with two concentric loops. This element perfectly creates the illusion of danger, although riders don't actually go upside down. With the Double Rift model, parks can get two of these loops for the price of one. Then there's Triango, an as-yet uninstalled slide that's already causing waves of excitement. This ride starts off as a singular slide, but soon diverges into a fork, offering riders a possibility of two paths. Factors such as weight, speed, and others make each ride unpredictable. You never know which way the raft will take you, adding thrills and unpredictability to the ride. Finally, Poland Water Parks unveiled their piece de resistance, the Zip and Slide. This groundbreaking attraction is a three-way hybrid, seamlessly combining a zip line, a roller coaster, and a water slide into an experience that may seem impossible, but it really is in the pipeline. The raft on this model features an attachment on the back, which hooks up to a cable or steel track above. This raft is able to switch between freely going down a standard water slide and being suspended from the track or cable above. This unique fusion absolutely represents the pinnacle of Poland's innovative spirit, and hopefully we'll get to see one of these open to the public. Number 16 is Italian manufacturer Fabri, with their brand new thrilling flat ride model the Impact Fly. Last year, Fabri introduced the standard Impact at IAPA. This attraction was predominantly designed for traveling showmen, with its ability to fit on one trailer and be easily disassembled and reassembled between fares. With the first one of these rides set to debut next year in Spain, Fabri has already planned an even larger variation. Much like the original, the Impact Fly features seats that freely flip sideways as they revolve around a center axis on rotating arms. With the Impact Fly, the gondolas are attached to a wheel that goes up and down a central tower. Standing at 66 feet tall or 20 meters, this tower allows passengers to catch greater height than the original, making the experience much more thrilling. While the original was meant for traveling showmen, this ride is meant for permanent parks, and it would be a stunning addition to any park's skyline. Though it is yet to be purchased, fairground enthusiasts can still look forward to the original's debut, set for December 2024. At number 15, Philadelphia Toboggan Company of Pennsylvania, along with the state's own Hershey Park, unveil new trains for the park's wooden coaster Comet. This beloved ride is the oldest operating roller coaster at Hershey Park, and it's getting a well-deserved aesthetic makeover. Since May of 1946, Comet has provided timeless wooden coaster thrills to its passengers. In a move that respects tradition while embracing innovation, Hershey Park has unveiled the new trains for the ride. These trains feature a three-tone blue color scheme, sparkling with a glitter metal flake treatment. This fresh look will be highlighted by gold trim and diamond plate details, along with an all-new logo for the lead car. This logo pays homage to Comet's early 1970s appearance. This updated train blends heritage with an up-to-date design, ensuring that Comet will continue to be a highlight in Hershey Park's collection. Number 14 is the front car for Great Coasters International's Colossus, another ride meant for the Six Flags Cadilla project. This train will be an Infinity Flyer model, which is the most advanced of GCI's ride vehicles. This particular design mixes traditional craftsmanship and modern engineering, boosting intricate woodwork and a pleasing color palette of white and teal. The careful design is evident in every contour and angle of the car, highlighting GCI's excellence in design. It certainly is eye candy. Number 13 is Host Rides with a Gondola Reveal. In addition to showcasing their recently announced flat rides, a full-size Breakdance 5 gondola was on display. This will be for a ride named Laser Dance, opening at Austria's Vienna Prater in 2024. The Breakdance 5 model is an evolution of the classic Breakdance model, but freshly enhanced with a sleeker design and lighting effects. The ride itself will include different intensity settings to cater to a wide variety of audiences. As for Laser Dance, it's set to launch in 2024, poised to be yet another incredible addition for this historic park. As for their other new flat rides, Hoss had several posters and pamphlets on display for them. We have a reimagined Troika named Troika 2G, a reimagined Booster named Booster Revolution, a reimagined Magic named Magic 2G, and the Spinning Cruiser, a ride similar to the Breakdance but with a few small differences. Truly some exciting developments for flat ride enthusiasts. Number 12 on our list brings an exciting collaboration between the Gravity Group and Six Flags Great Escape in Queensbury, New York. 
At IAPA, they unveiled the ride vehicle for the Bobcat, a unique wooden roller coaster set to open in 2024. The train predominantly features a sculpture of a Bobcat ready to pounce. This sculpture is colorful, detailed, and eye-catching, and it's sure to look great zooming across the track. This will be the park's first new coaster in over a decade, and it's already generating a buzz for what looks to be an airtime-packed layout. Officials describe it as small and feisty, much like the animal it's named after. Or you could say it's like the kick of a White Castle 1921 Ghost Pepper slider. Sorry, I just had to throw that in there. Guests can look forward to a smooth, swift ride that zips through turns and dips, capturing the essence of its namesake. Needless to say, you can expect the Bobcat to become a new favorite for park visitors in 2024. At number 11, the fine folks at Swiss manufacturer Bolliger & Mabillard are bringing yet another coaster to SeaWorld Orlando. Last year, they showed off the state-of-the-art train for Pipeline the Surf Coaster. This time around, the company is wading into relatively uncharted territory for them, a family launch coaster. This new addition named Penguin Trek is set to open in 2024, promising an epic combination of penguins and roller coasters. Two things that are just awesome. At IAPA, the lead car was unveiled. This prototype design is unlike anything B&M has ever built before. In fact, SeaWorld's design and engineering team directly worked with B&M to craft a brand spanking new chassis for it. This train will be heavily themed, resembling a modern snowmobile. With skis and springs, these cars blend well with the ride's arctic theming. Fittingly enough, the coaster will be built adjacent to SeaWorld's famous penguin habitat, which will greet riders directly after the ride. If you have penguin maniacs in the family, you'll be happy to know that this ride has a mere 42-inch height requirement, allowing both little Timmy and Grandma Florence to catch a ride on it. Now it's time for the top 10. And we're starting off with German manufacturer Mar Rides. At their booth, they showcased a scaled-down spike coaster train model and a conceptual layout named the Speed Chaser, complete with a mesmerizing miniature model that glowed with a stunning cool color scheme. Capturing photos and videos of this miniature was a treat, but right next to it was the most notable innovation, the water fight. This spike coaster concept is designed for water parks, and this recent development stands out following the successful installation of a spike coaster on the Mardi Gras cruise ship from Carnival. For this new ride, the water fight takes cues from Setpoint's old roller soaker concept, but greatly improves them. This ride combines the excitement of a spike coaster with the interactive fun of a water gun fight. The track itself weaves around a structure of staircases. Here, spectators can take control of water guns mounted on the multi-level platforms to Dallas riders. Meanwhile, the spike vehicles are outfitted with their own water guns, turning the experience into a jubilant two-way battle. Each vehicle is equipped with two water guns, each having its own refillable water tank. Like other spike coasters, riders have the ability to control their vehicle's speed, adding a strategic element to the water fight. Whether you slow down for a better aim or speed up to dodge the water jets, this is certainly one of the most interactive coaster concepts we've seen in recent years. And as if that weren't cool enough, this model can integrate water slides onto the structure. So you could easily see this installed at a water park. And with cruise ships continuing to innovate their own water features, you may see it on one of those too. So if you're looking for a coaster to cool off and have fun on, this concept is certain to catch your attention. Number 9 takes us to the Rocky Mountain Construction Booth, where the company introduced the trains for the new and improved Fire in the Hole at Missouri's Silver Dollar City. Set to open in the spring of 2024, this ride will be an updated take on an old classic. At around $30 million, this will be among the largest investments in the park's history. This dark ride coaster hybrid has been a part of the park's lineup since 1972, based on the true story of how the town of Marmaros was burnt to the ground by vigilantes. The reimagined coaster retains this historic storyline, along with its powered incline, three drops, and splash landing. This time though, the attraction will receive several enhancements. Among these are a custom soundtrack, new lighting effects, and state-of-the-art special effects. As for the trains, the front car was unveiled on the trade floor with a blockbuster reveal. This unveiling was accompanied by a performance from Casey and the Attaboys. Songs performed included Ring of Fire by Johnny Cash, The Fireman by George Strait, and Through the Fire and Flames by Dragon Force. Okay, I was kidding with the last one, but that would have been epic. The trains themselves are custom built to resemble the ones on the original. These new ones, though, will include an onboard audio system and a vibrant new paint scheme. All in all, this reinvigorated attraction is set to retain its charm while incorporating modern technology. 
Look for this new take on an old classic to open in 2024. Also worth noting was a miniature model of RMC's Wild Moose concept. This is the company's proposed take on a wild mouse ride. It certainly is bizarre, but it's also extremely charming, and I'm eager to see one get built based on its uniqueness alone. Number 8 takes us to American manufacturer Premier Rides with another refurbished attraction. This time, the historic Loch Ness Monster at Virginia's Busch Gardens Williamsburg is undergoing a major transformation. First opening in 1978 as the world's tallest roller coaster, this attraction is the oldest one still operating at the park. For 2024, this classic aero coaster is being revitalized by Premier Rides, with a focus on preserving its iconic layout while offering a new, smoother track. The announcement at IAPA featured live bagpipe players playing traditional Scottish music. Though all that was shown was a promotional image, it was nonetheless an extremely notable announcement. In this instance, the transformation will involve replacing almost a thousand feet of the original track. This will make the ride much smoother, and to the relief of many, the announcement did not involve putting comfort collars on the ride. And those wanting to see the classics preserved had every reason to celebrate, and the park is aiming to preserve this classic ride while bringing it up to modern standards. At number 7 is a company you may not have expected to see on this list, MV Rides. Formerly known as Martin and Vlemix, this company is mostly known for their work on wooden roller coasters. However, the company has recently grown substantially after acquiring the patent portfolio of engineer Bill Kitchen. This man developed several notable ride concepts, with one of them being the Polar Coaster concept. Originally slated to open in Orlando, Florida, this project never got off the ground after investors allegedly soured on the concept. However, MV Rides has seemingly revived this concept, albeit as much more of an observation tower than a roller coaster. Still though, the model they had on display at IAPA was stunning, and it's easy to imagine one of these opening in a city like Las Vegas. On this ride, the slow-moving gondolas ascend a twisting spiral to the top where guests disembark and take in the tower's views. Then, all they have to do is board again and take another track segment back downwards. This new attraction is visually stunning, and its reimagining as a slow-moving observation tower makes it a much more feasible investment. After all, it'll be much quieter than a roller coaster, and therefore less likely to cause issues with local residents. It remains to be seen whether or not we'll see one of these open, but I'd certainly be eager to check it out. Number 6 takes us under the sea with Sally Dark Rides, as they team up with the Circus Circus Hotel in Las Vegas. They are set to launch a new SpongeBob SquarePants Dark Ride named SpongeBob's Crazy Carnival Ride. This interactive attraction will feature practical effects, animatronics, and integrated projections. The goal is to take riders into an episode of SpongeBob and give them an interactive video game experience. One exciting feature revealed at IAPA was the unveiling of an animatronic Mr. Krabs. Yep, the episode Crabborg predicted the future. This figure comes complete with the voice of Clancy Brown, who infuses the character with his signature currency-centered one-liners. I personally love visiting Las Vegas, and a new ride based on one of my all-time favorite shows is just another reason to return in the future. Number 5 takes us into the toy box with Chance Rides. This coaster is going to the Hot Wheels section of the new Mattel Adventure Park in Arizona. At the expo, they unveiled the sleek Hot Wheels Twin Mill Racer lead car. The design of this vehicle is inspired by the iconic first Hot Wheels car, the Twin Mill, renowned for its smooth lines and distinctive side engines. At least that's what I think they're called. I'm a total GP when it comes to auto stuff. Hell, I can't even tell the difference between a carburetor and a transmission. Anyway, this coaster will not only have an iconic train, but it will have an orange track just like the original Hot Wheels sets. How cool is that? This coaster, which is a Hyper GTX model, is the first one of its kind to open since Lightning Run at Kentucky Kingdom. Coaster fans have been clamoring for another one of these coasters to open, and in 2024, they'll get one in Arizona. Well, number 4 is, oddly enough, going to take us to the Thanksgiving table with Dutch manufacturer Vacoma. Would you like some gravy with your coaster? Well, you're going to get it on Good Gravy! At IAPA, Indiana's Holiday World and Splash and Safari proudly presented their custom-designed, gravy-boat-shaped front and back cars for their Good Gravy coaster. The train coaches on display were hand-sculpted by Vacoma, featuring hand-painted designs that paid direct homage to vintage Corningware Pyrex. And I think those are two different brands, but whatever. Not only are the painted designs accurate, but the train has a hand-sculpted handle in front as well as an overflowing amount of gravy. Thick gravy. The ride experience on Good Gravy will match its unique design. 
This attraction is set to be North America's first Vekoma family boomerang coaster. The coaster reaches a height of 72 feet and offers another go around backwards. With a mere 38 inch height requirement, Good Gravy is by far the most accessible family coaster on the list. Even still, the twisting layout, thrilling drops, and overall shuttle coaster experience are sure to make it a hit among park goers in general. So grab your turkey and get your mashed potato volcano ready, because Good Gravy is set to open to the public this coming May. Number 3 is SNS Sansei, revealing the first ever installation of their much anticipated Axis coaster. As you may remember, this coaster was first announced back in 2019, and it generated a lot of hype. Many wondered when the first one would be installed. When it comes to prototypes, many parks are afraid to be the first due to the technical risks that come with an unproven model. However, this model will finally come into fruition in 2024. At this year's IAPA event, SNS unveiled the front car design for their first Axis coaster installation. This ride is being installed at several new Transformers-themed indoor family entertainment centers. In this instance, the track layout is relatively small to fit in an enclosed space, but the fact that it's being built is nonetheless a milestone in engineering. The model itself proves the engineering prowess of SNS, featuring 4D vehicle technology with seats that rotate independently on horizontal axis. This design promises a one-of-a-kind ride experience that varies with each group of passengers, influenced by both weight and distribution. Also worth noting is that the design includes an LSM magnetic launch system, making it the first launched 4D coaster on the market. And if I'm wrong, please correct me. The fact that SNS is finally installing an Axis coaster marks a significant achievement for the company. The physical installation of this groundbreaking coaster highlights the potential for more unique and thrilling experiences around the world. Hopefully, these will be the first of many Axis coaster installations. Taking the silver is Italian manufacturer Zamperla with their newest front car reveal. This train is heading for Top Thrill 2 at Cedar Point in Ohio. Set to launch in 2024, Top Thrill 2 will be the world's tallest and fastest triple launch coaster, and it will utilize Zamperla's new lightning train design. Originally opening in 2003 as Top Thrill Dragster, this coaster faced several technical issues involving the original trains. Recently, the decision was made to give the ride a makeover to improve its efficiency and reliability. The old hydraulic launch will be replaced with a forwards and backwards magnetic swing launch, which is likely to greatly reduce maintenance migraines. Cedar Point officials made the decision to work with Samperla due to the latter's round-the-clock work on researching new technologies and materials. And at IAPA, this research has come into fruition with a reimagined train design for the problematic coaster. This blue Formula One-style train is a shift from the original Top Fuel Dragster design, with a sleek and modern approach. With carbon fiber elements to lower the train's weight, Zamperla partnered with a leading F1 car carbon fiber producer to incorporate high-quality materials into the train's design. Furthermore, the aluminum milled chassis saves both time and money on the park's behalf, ensuring operational and maintenance efficiency with minimal welding. One especially impressive development is the 530mm wheel design. These wheels are some of the largest in the industry and will be able to handle the ride's top speed of 120 miles per hour. One thing I initially forgot to add into the script is the Go Go Bounce, a recently announced flat ride. Zamperla had a working model on the trade floor, and it was an instant eye catcher. Please excuse the strange voice, by the way. I caught a horrible cold after recording the initial audio and temporarily lost my voice. So on short notice, I had to use this AI voice model I made to add this detail into the video. Before the number one spot, here are a few honorable mentions worth noting. First up, I want to give a special shout out to Excesso for inviting me to their happy hour. Here they had free drinks and mini beef wellingtons on a stick, no joke. This year, the company won a Brass Ring Award for their newest product, QView, a new line management solution. QView is an advanced line counting system that uses machine learning and real-time data to accurately estimate wait times for theme park attractions. This system, which eliminates the need for manual counting, integrates with Accesso's virtual queuing technology, improving efficiency and the guest experience. So if you're interested in the ins and outs of park operations, keep an eye out for their future developments. Next up is Froggy's Fog. This company focuses on fog machines, bubble machines, and numerous themed scents. This year though, they actually introduced a new product called, no joke, the A1 Thanos. This handheld fog machine resembles something out of an Avengers movie and is able to shoot fog at quite an impressive distance. 
Then there was trampoline company Acrobat with this. Wow. <laughs> That's awesome. A trampoline that makes sound awesome. Finally, I want to bring up the condiment cow. I don't know how I missed this at previous events, but everyone's been telling me about it. And this thing is awesome. This year, it was locked and loaded with mustard, caramel, and chocolate syrup. There was also a condiment sow, containing barbecue sauce, ketchup, and ranch. Perhaps Taylor Swift should invest in one of these for the last two condiments alone. And now for the number one spot, an undeniable achievement from Swiss manufacturer Intamin. On the trade floor, they reveal more details about Falcon's Flight, the largest attraction of the Six Flags Cadilla project. This coaster, which is currently under construction, is undeniably an achievement for roller coaster engineering. If completed, it will in fact be the world's tallest, fastest, and longest roller coaster. This ride will have a 640 foot elevation difference from its highest to lowest point and reach a top speed of 156 miles per hour. From an engineering perspective, this coaster was undoubtedly challenging to design. What Intamin had to do was build a coaster of this size and scale in the harsh Saudi Arabian desert conditions. This environment would seem impossible to build such a ride in under any circumstances. Even still, Intamin persisted with this project, and it's undeniably a huge step forward in the field of ride engineering. These technical and mechanical achievements are evident in the front car revealed at the expo. This front car resembles a falcon's head, sporting a blue and gold paint scheme and an intricate onboard lighting system. On Intamin's part, the technical and mechanical design features are especially impressive. When it comes to building coasters in the desert, a common challenge is airborne sand particles. This is why passengers on the UAE's Formula Rosa have to wear goggles on the ride. Unlike that coaster though, Falcon's flight won't require protective eyewear despite being even faster. This is thanks to a unique windshield feature for each row. This provides protection from the harsh desert elements all while maintaining an unobstructed view. Furthermore, the aforementioned heat of the ride's Middle Eastern desert setting was another challenge that had to be addressed. Intamin knew that the ride's high speeds would only add more heat to the train. This would put its components to a test never seen before. To address this, Intamin developed extra-large running wheels with specially designed rims for enhanced cooling. The wheels will also be air-cooled in the station. The coaster's LSM-compatible vehicles also possess a weld-free chassis, which is sure to make maintenance easier. It is a fact that this attraction represents a significant milestone in coaster design and technology. The technical advancements made for this project will undoubtedly carry on to future installations across the world, and this could very well be the starting point of a coaster tech revolution. For that reason, Intamin's achievements make this front car well worthy of the number one spot. Now it's time for the comment shoutout program. This is where I take five random comments from my previous video and read them out. These comments come from my failed coasters video on Top Thrill Dragster. Adventures with Jerry says, and to think they're another 420 foot tower of a similar stature. I seriously can't wait for Top Thrill 2. And it's amazing to watch this new tower be constructed. It's awe-inspiring. Julie Captivated in Florida says, I remember the thrill of getting coaster credits back in the day. The details you give are critical to coaster fans. Airfare, hotel, car rental, and park tickets could take six months or more to save for, and a blow like having a coaster fail could ruin a vacation. Giancarlo Feliciano Castaneda says, I'm terrified of heights, but I love roller coasters. I would have ridden it had I ever got the chance to ride it. Isan Cubing says, OMG, the Top Thrill Dragster video introduction is 20 years old. By the way, I've been watching your videos since 2018 and your videos are amazing. Seriously, after watching your 20 insane and unique carnival rides video, I put nearly everything on my bucket list. Keep up the great work. Thank you so much, Isan. And I apologize if I pronounced your name wrong, but I really do appreciate the comment. And Piplup James says, It's crazy that both in 2016 and 2021, I was at Cedar Point, did ride Dragster, then a week later, the news came out with the incidents. If you want to see your words in my next video, leave a comment down below and it may be selected. Please note though that inflammatory or spam comments will not be read. Thank you all so much, and if you want to support me on Patreon, you can do so once again at the link in the description. Thanks for watching everyone, feel free to like, share, and subscribe. You can follow me on social media on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook, or you can check out my website at themeparkcrazy.com. And I'm on TikTok. This is Theme Park Crazy, and I'll see you all next time.